The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich by William L. Shire. This 1,500-page monumental narrative of one of the darkest periods in the history of world events reads like a thriller. Mr. Shire thoroughly tells us about a twisted conqueror who persuaded his nation to follow him blindly, promising a grand Reich that would last a thousand years. I'm only going to touch on some themes that struck me worth pointing out because I recommend this book as essential reading for anyone interested in understanding World War I and World War II. It is a narrative about the humiliation of a nation and its one leader with a savior mentality who develops a successful political campaign to eventually take over Germany with a majority without a majority, but because of his emerging political skill, is able to successfully take control of the country legally and democratically. He swiftly crushes, however, any vestige of democracy so that one understands that this proud nation would become a personality cult, a personality that suffers from such a violent temper that he's called the, quote, carpet eater, behind his back as a result of the fury of his tantrums. He falls violently to the floor and ferociously bites down on the corner of the carpet to gain the physical control that he lost during his tantrum. Hitler calculated successfully that the Allies lost their desire to go to war. World War I was supposed to be the war to end all wars. However, for Hitler, the war was a complete humiliation that had to be extirpated. In his wilderness years in Vienna, he discovered Jew hatred and became a rabid anti-Semite and successfully developed a theme of scapegoating the Jews and blaming them for every economic ill that plagued Germany as a result of losing the First World War. He developed a following initially of misfits and discovered a talent of community organizing and political management. He practiced his oratory and became a charismatic speaker and was able to spellbind audiences with women even swooning during his speeches. Hitler equated his Jewish boogeyman with the Soviet Union. He believed that the Soviets were part of an international Jewish conspiracy that needed to be destroyed. And ironically, he made a pact, a peace treaty with such an arch enemy, the Soviets, so he could maintain a one-front war. His plan was brilliant. Offer the Soviets half of Poland so he could unify German speakers in Austria and parts of Poland and the Balkans, and then crush the Western allies of France and England, his nemeses from the First World War, and then turn to the Soviets. His beginning of World War II was riddled with success on the battlefield. His treaty with the Soviets held as he destroyed Poland and maintained a successful irredentism, quote, living space, swallowing up Austria and the Sudetenland. He then turned on France, which capitulated surprisingly quickly. The only, the only one who, who understood early on what Hitler was about, to, was trying to do was Winston Churchill. And ironically, Churchill early on in his career, equated Bolsheviks with the Jews like Hitler. However, Churchill learned and was educated, being able to differentiate Jews from the Bolsheviks. He had a healthy disdain for communism and became a Zionist sympathizer, a good friend to the Jews. Hitler blundered badly, however, and did not accept that his, his, his general's advice. He turned on the Soviet Union, underestimating its strength, and was ultimately pushed back and had a two-front war, which even he knew could not be won, when the United States of America joined the Allies, as Churchill maintained a close relationship with Franklin Roosevelt. Shire touches on the brutal abuses of the Nazi concentration and death camps and highlights some of the very horrible medical experiments the sadism of the Nazi medical personnel at these torture chambers defy human behavior. One experiment records how, uh, how long one freezes to death and to see if one could be revived. 
the so-called freeze-dried experiment means that a person is splashed with very cold water and the timer records how long it takes for a person to lose consciousness and expire. Ironically, the doctors also become surprised when they attempt at revising a victim through the warmth of the embrace of the opposite sex. Occasionally, an unusually strong man would warm, would be warm, and then he would be revived. This long narrative reads quickly. It is well structured and keeps the reader's attention. Mr. Shire even admits in his afterward his surprise at the success of such a long book. And although professional historians don't appreciate a journalist taking on the role of an historian, the book is not journalism, but rather based on original research, based on captured documents. The author appreciates the warm reception all over the world to his narrative. He notes that Germany did not appreciate the book. This book, highly recommended.